here from the Giants. Uh, not too shabby himself with three. There's a lot of guys with three sacks. Check out the picks. Who's doing the best in the picks? D'Angelo Hall. I think he was a free agent pickup, so that's a pretty good pickup. Ryan Clark, back, back Redskins, wow. Zach Bowman. Ronaldo McLean, that's one of my guys that I'm keen on. We traded Sean Lee earlier in the season for a strong safety, which has really paid off. Uh, Rolando McLean is just playing lights out for us. So it's been a great, great time, great season. Um, kind of how the NFC East is stacked up. Let's, let's look at one other thing before we move on. Overall, let's talk about how the whole UFL is looking now. We kind of went to the NFC East dive. We're going to go look at overall how the UFL is doing. Right there is the Arian Foster trade. I must still get my jaw hit the ground whenever I saw that. So let's go back and let's check out the standings for the league. And if you don't know, the UFL we've been around for 17 years, 17 seasons. Probably four or five Maddens. I can't recall just off the top of my head how far we went back. If you go to our homepage on League Daddies, you can, Daddy Leagues, you can kind of see how many we've had. So let's check out the NFC East here. So we've got the uh, Panthers, 3 and 1. They scored 121 points and 73 against. So they're, they're winning big. Redskins again. Powerhouse, they always are. It's tough being the NFC East with the Redskins, Giants, and Eagles, uh, I mean, I struggle against those guys um, a lot, so it could be a long season, but hopefully not. Then we got the Packers. Preston's really doing a great job. The Saints, another great team. Pulled out a win against me. Couldn't beat them. The Giants sitting in the NFC at 4-1, of course. Ryan beat the Redskins, so kind of odd how they're not up top. And then the Vikings. Sitting here at three and one, the Rams two and one. They've already had a bye. Seahawks have had a bye, and the Cardinals had a bye. They had a win. But if you look at let's go look at who we got here for points for the most points scored. Giants have played five games, so that's a little misleading, but. You can kind of see that the Giants are winning big, doubling up their opponents in almost every game. Uh, <laughs> surprising, the Lions, 107 to 109. Uh, the Lions are going to either win big or they're going to lose big because it's been hit or miss on the interceptions. It looks like he's figured out how to limit Stafford's interceptions, so it should be an interesting story with the Lions. Uh, the Vikings, always strong. And the Redskins, 98 points. Let's go look at the... Uh, Lowest points allowed. That, that'll be interesting. 49ers. You see that defense is nasty. Uh, we were lucky to pull a win off against them. I think it was 10 to 7 or something like that. So it was insanely close. Uh, we scored 49, but you're only allowing 43 in four games. A little over 10 points a game. That's, that's an amazing defense. Uh, I think we're going to see some big things. Cardinals as well. So today, if the NFC West is no slouch on defense. Take a look at the AFC, see how things are sitting in the AFC. Uh, everybody's favorite team, the Raiders. 4-0. It seems like every first year Madden, Madden 25, I think we played two first years because of a restart, and the Raiders won both Super Bowls back to back. Something about that first year's Raiders, people just can't get it. He's 4-0. Um, 139 points to 86, he's winning big. But that division is insane. We have the Chargers in that, four-time Super Bowl champion in that. The Ravens, uh, now a D-unit took those over. So but it's funny, he swapped with the Dolphins. So the Dolphins, Billy's doing pretty well, but he just got pretty humbling loss to the Raiders uh, as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this AFC plays out. You've got the Browns sitting here at 2-1. and one, or two and one. They're using Johnny Football as their quarterbacks. So that's it's really exciting to see how he's doing and everything. And here you go, the Broncos. The Broncos, two and one. Uh, this is the speed kills. That's what they go for. If you watch some highlights of the Broncos, you're going to see a lot of speed on the field. Um, Tate's probably the most improved player 
He's gotten better and better every season in this thing, and I, I think he's a legitimate AFC playoff contender. It's always fun to watch him play. I always root for him. You can see, let's go look at the, see the points scored. <coughs> so the Raiders have scored the most points. Dolphins second most. Ravens right behind them. And then the Chargers. Uh, <laughs> Chargers usually aren't a high scoring team, but it's, they usually win a lot of close games, but they win a lot of games. Uh, as you can see, their defense is amazing. Let's go look at points against. The Colts have the least amount, but they just can't find the offense. So it's tough. One and three. And well, usually if you let, only allow 62 points in four games, you're going to win. Uh, most of those games just had some bad breaks for the Colts. Uh, <laughs> Browns are 77 and 77. That's interesting. That's kind of how we sit. And if you take an overall look at everything NFL-wise. Currently, our number one ranked team is the Raiders. Panthers, Dolphins, Chargers, Redskins, Ravens, Packers, Saints. So you can see how it plays out. So Cowboys are down here at 20, uh, three and two. We're gonna try our best to be better more than eight and eight. I can't promise we will, but we're gonna try. It'll be interesting to see. So we're gonna do one last thing before we go, just kind of deep dive into the Cowboys team and kind of what we're seeing with our team, who needs to be playing better, uh, and what our plans are coming up. So you can see we, we had a little trouble last game and had to pull Romo because he was making some insane throws. We actually lost to the Saints. I forgot we had Dez Bryant wide open in the end zone. Romo tosses it to his girlfriend in the 17th row of the stands. It was just insane. Uh, but neither here nor there. We pulled him out decision in third quarter because he was missing some wide passes. Uh, Whedon came in shaky too and then at the end hit Des Bryant to save us for the game. Uh, we're going to go back to Romo. We're going to stick with him. We just think it was something we need to work on his confidence next week. Make sure that brings up. Rushing. Murray's our workhorse. Dunbar, we like to get him the ball to keep, keep uh, Murray fresh in the games. Probably need to give him a few more carries, but I got to get that yards per carry up. And Dunbar's actually doing pretty good at 6.8 yards a carry. Uh, but he's coming in fresh in the tired defense, so it's a little misleading. Our, our fullback, he's really the key to our game. He, he blocks better than most people think. Uh, doesn't get a whole lot of carries, as you can see, but he's really great in our blocking. Receiving, this is where <coughs> we really, really need to spread it out and work it up. I feel like my passing game is terrible, too predictable, and I'm everybody's stacking up on the run, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to, to get the passes and spread them around. Um, 22 passes to Des Bryant, that's way too heavy to one guy. I gotta spread it around more. Witten, 17 passes. Um, he's usually my safety valve, and, and Murray as well. When I played the uh, Saints, they were covering everything. Had the check down almost every other play. Still threw three picks. Um, Harris. He's a better run blocker than a receiver, but I gotta find a way to get him the ball. And then Terrence Williams, he's he's got potential. I just gotta get him the ball. And then Beasley runs amazing routes. I, like I said, I gotta open my playbook up. I don't like running the five wides very much, or four wides, because my offensive line is a great run blocking, but they're terrible at pass blocking. So you can see, let's see how many sacks. Romo's been like beat to hell. Eight sacks five games so he's been getting hit a lot uh, it's been pretty tough so three and two could be much better could be much worse but it is what it is so tackles church and then here Rashad Jones we traded Sean Lee this has been one of our best pickups we finally got a safety back there that can help us out uh, church is playing amazing too but you really don't want your safety leading in tackles that means people are getting downfield on you uh, Ronaldo McClain we think this guy's gonna be big he's like He's a brute force. He's, he had two interceptions. Force fumble. The guy is really powerful when he hits you. He's gonna if he hits you square, you're gonna fumble. So this is kind of what we're gonna go through each time. We're just gonna talk about how the Cowboys are doing. Hopefully next time my chat will be up because I really can't see the chat uh, this time. But this first first ever coaches episode, just kind of. See where it goes from here. We'll talk about how the Cowboys are doing, what we've done. Oh, and we've actually 
one other thing before we go. We talk about our managing our rosters. We're going to talk about re-signing players. Every player's been re-signed, so that's great for us. We signed Dez. We signed DeMarco Murray. We got everybody we wanted. And you can look, our salary cap situation is sitting pretty nice. We got $27.7 million. It's going to go down next year when the new salaries go out. We still should have $15 million or so in cap penalty. Uh, cap left open, so we're sitting pretty well. With <coughs> a few guys, we're going to have to sign these guys at the end. These are the free agents that we picked up and haven't had a chance to talk to yet. So, punter, McLean, definitely got to get that guy re-signed comes time. There's a lot of our one-year guys, so we have to get these guys signed. We'll play Henry Melton. Hopefully, he's not asking too much, but we definitely need him back because he's one of our weak spots. So we'll kind of recap, go through how it's been going here. Let's just go back to the schedule. Kind of look ahead for the Cowboys. So you can see Big win on the 49ers. I mean, as you see, their defense was amazing. It's tough to score points on those guys. Uh, they're only averaging 10 points a game. Uh, surprising, I usually don't score 42 points. I just get a lot of interceptions. I gotta change the game late. The Rams, it seems like I'm always in a lot of tight games and just can't pull them out. Saints, again, another close game. I couldn't pull it out. Texans, a close game that we pulled out. Uh, but we gotta travel to the Seahawks. It's gonna be a tough game. A uh, really tough game. And then we got Ryan coming up. And the Redskins going up. So these next three games, we can report back next week. We're either going to be feeling really good about our team or really bad, but we've got to get to the lab and work on our passing some more because people are going to just stop the run and we're going to be out of luck if I, Romo can't throw it more than five yards on target. So uh, we got to work on something there. He's definitely going to work on his uh, confidence next week. But if we can get past this with a few, you can see – we got three straight home games, which should help us. Jaguars coming up, but we're not really going to look that far ahead. We're going to focus on the Seattle, go back, see how they're doing. Uh, Giants, Redskins, and then but after this Redskins game, it's either going to be we've got a shot or just playing for pride. Hopefully we're not playing for pride, but we play every game as hard as we can. Uh, so this is all for the coaches show. Hopefully... We'll expand, do a little more next time, and maybe get the chat going because the live chat uh, connected. I had some trouble with Twitch. Lately, I've changed my Xbox username, so this will hopefully a broadcast and it recorded. So kind of a look at the UFL and how we're doing. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, go to daddyleagues.com and search for the UFL 15. That's our league name. Follow us on there. Uh, we're on Twitch as well. Most of our games are broadcast so you can look on uh, UFL Cowboys at UFL Cowboys on Twitch and he tries to log on most games that we were playing uh, this week's game let's look at week five I think the only two games have been played are the Cowboys and the Giants so more to come keep an eye out for us and I hope you enjoyed the show Xbox stop broadcast